A solitary mound stands in a Scandinavian landscape. It must have been built in ancient times, but the rest is a mystery. How old is it? Who were the people that built it and why? A team of archaeologists decide to excavate and find some answers. Inside the mound, archaeologists discover a rusted iron sword and other artifacts surrounding a human skeleton and animal bones. Who was this person? Why were they buried here? What was their position in society? What did they look like? Scientists are working together to answer these questions. Archaeogeneticists work with the bones in a clean room laboratory. The laboratory is pressurized to keep out dust and other particles that might contaminate the samples. They wear protective clothes and gear to prevent contamination of the samples with modern DNA. In the laboratory, the archaeogeneticist collects some bone material with a drill. DNA is best preserved in a part of the temporal bone called the petrus. This petrus part houses the inner ear and is one of the densest bones in your body. Archaeogeneticists can also work with the roots of teeth. An additional sample is collected for carbon-14 dating, which can tell us when the individual lived. The bone powder, which resulted from the drilling, is then used to extract the DNA. The extracted DNA is subsequently sequenced and the individual's unique genetic code revealed. This information is used by population geneticists, whose analysis can give information about the buried individual and the population they came from. The combination of these different analyses can help us learn more about the mysterious mound and the skeleton within. The buried weapons, horses, artifacts and even the large size of the burial mound itself tell the archaeologists that the buried person was a wealthy and respected warrior someone who was of high status in the Viking society. The carbon-14 dating of the bone from the skull supports the archaeologist's hypothesis that this burial mount dates to the 9th century AD. From the shape and size of the pelvis, as well as features of the skull and other bones, the osteologist can deduce that this was likely a female. However, osteological sex determination can be very difficult especially on young individuals whose skeleton is not yet fully developed. Thus, genetic sex determination is very helpful, and here the geneticist finds that the individual had two X chromosomes, confirming that the buried individual was female. From their analysis of the skeleton, the osteologist estimates that she was around 20 years old and approximately 165 centimeters tall at the time of her death. The fact that she had a strong skeleton and teeth without any cavities indicates that she was healthy. Further analysis of specific genes in the DNA can reveal what she looked like. The geneticist finds that she likely had brown hair, light skin and green eyes. Looking even closer at the skeleton, the osteologist finds that she had large muscle attachments on the right arm and shoulder which suggests extensive use, for instance, wielding a heavy sword. She also had several healed wounds and fractures. The cause of death, however, could not be determined. The findings gathered by archaeologists, osteologists and geneticists support the hypothesis that she was a trained Viking Age warrior. Her DNA can also be compared with that of other individuals, either from the same burial site or from elsewhere. This way, you might discover whether the people are closely related and reveal more information about the society they lived in.